Hello everybody and welcome back to The Average. Today we're going to dive straight into the video because I've done many of these intros before and we're getting into it. So today we are painting over the movie cover of Goosebumps and I couldn't even figure out who this was written by. It's obviously adapted from the screenplay and it has a little foreword by R.L. Stein, and then it's based on the screenplay by Darren Lemke and the story is by another couple of guys so it's kind of a collaborative thing I guess it's just the movie story but I wanted to paint something over the top of it even though it is a book about the movie it's kind of a strange one here but I really like Goosebumps I think there's just such fun like stories and I bet you guys watched the show when you were younger maybe and maybe read some of the books. I remember my sister had the one with the doll on it and then you press the button and its eyes would flash and it really freaked me out when I was little. We're gonna start off by scratching off the cover because it is a little bit shiny and this part always makes me cringe and I know it makes you guys cringe so I'm sorry about that. The reason that I'm painting over book covers is because I don't like book covers on books. I think they should be separate entities. I can understand to like trying to market for people to read the book who like the movie but I think you would probably figure that out by yourself like okay this book is based on that this is my book and I'm painting over it so you know if you guys have a problem just uh, just leave the video simple as that I always have to give that little disclaimer it's kind of annoying really but I think most people tend to like these book cover paint overs and I really enjoy doing them so that's why I've been doing a few more recently on my channel so I started off by layering down a colour of the gouache from the Artex. So Artex are the company who have made these jelly gouache that I'm using. And they're also doing a competition with me and we're going to give away five of these jelly gouache palettes and also lots of alcohol markers to five winners. And then we're going to have a lot of other winners. So we're going to have ten smaller winners who are going to get a surprise gift. And then everybody who enters the competition is going to get a discount code of Amazon for Artex products. So that's pretty cool. If you guys are interested, um, see the link in the description. Basically, all you have to do is follow me and Artex and then create your own book cover. So you can paint the book cover, um, draw it, use digital, uh, it's open worldwide. You can make it in your own style or you can recreate a, a cover that you've seen. Anything goes and more expensive experimental the better because I've been really seeing some really cool experimental pieces and that really inspired me to go ahead and use some sticker paper in this piece because I, in the past I've done a lot of paper art stuff and I kind of haven't done that for a while so this time I was like why don't I combine the two things and painting over the movie covers with the kind of paper art and I realized I had this see-through sticker paper and I really wanted to play with layering effects with the see-through sticker paper but also um, the non-transparency for <laughs> the non-transparent sticker paper I wanted to use as well so I wanted to have this like old creepy house as the main asset of this image so that was going to be like the main thing that we would see and I've always realized that when I'm painting on books it's kind of difficult to do a little bit of detail so I thought this would be a perfect time to bring out just using paper um, art so like the sticker and I created this, I used watercolours to create the mansion feel and just I cut around this house, this old creepy house and I stuck it down in a place that I thought would look good and I wanted to convey that and keep going with that throughout the whole image and you will see that I start to use different trees and clouds and I think overall it's a really good fun thing that I've created and I'm really I really got into this one which has been I don't know at first I was like thinking is this gonna be that fun I don't know because it's a very strange one with the the book kind of being about the movie so it did I have a right to paint over it I felt a little but uninspired by this one because I obviously haven't read this book it is like a book based on the movie I mean it's obviously for little children because I think it's middle grade I will have a little peek through it a, a bit later but yeah so I'm not necessarily creating stuff that is for the book I've seen the film which isn't actually awful it's quite entertaining it's not amazing but it's quite entertaining and I thought well I mean I could be inspired by that a little bit because or just like my memories of what goosebumps would be with the monsters and the different things and the haunted houses so 
I'm kind of indicating a haunted uh, Halloween theme for this one, really. Not necessarily what goes on in the book, but not necessarily too far removed from it that it didn't couldn't be something inside the book. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> So I just wanted to have fun with this one, really. I really like the colour scheme. I think I've been doing this thing again where I'm using pinks and blues. And I really need to try and stop using that because I think like it's become my colour palette and I need to steer away from it. I'm finding it really difficult, guys. But yeah, so we used pink and blue on this one. But we used a lot of green and I added some orange pumpkins, which you'll see in the end. Um, so maybe we're getting a little bit away from it. I hope so. I need to try harder, really, at that. Anyway, getting away from the colour problems, here's the fun bit. So I took some transparent paper and what I wanted to do was have like some water at the bottom of the image as if there's like a lake um, underneath this hill where things are coming up. And I also used transparent paper and I painted like a white cloud of smoke, wispy smoke, because I wanted to have like a see-through, I don't know, like this kind of cloud effect. It came out a little bit darker than I thought in the sense that it's like pure white. And I do play around with the transparency of these kind of clouds a little bit later. But this is the fun of this sticker paper. I found it really fun to just mess around with and then kind of figure out as I went where I wanted to put each piece. So I was just layering down gouache on top of these transparent water, um, transparent sticker paper and then cutting out shapes and just playing around with it as if it was just, I don't know, something I can make up as I go along, a bit of a mosaic and layering stuff. I really enjoyed it. So I did like a layer of this green to kind of signify maybe some slime, like a lake of slime, and I realised it was too opaque so I wanted to dull that down a bit so you could see the water coming through underneath and it would have that layering effect that I wanted and it didn't really work out as much as I hoped it would but I think it still looks kind of cool and then I go in later with another bit of a layering effect and I just I found it really fun to just keep building up this image as I went so I would be creating a tree at one part waiting for that to dry and then going off to the next bit of the image and waiting for that to dry and then cutting out bits and just figuring out where they would go, like placing them down a little bit and just seeing what would look best and if it would fit. And then if it didn't fit, what could I do? Maybe I could add like, I could paint directly on the book over the top of it or underneath it to give that depth of field. And I wanted to signify more that this was a hill going down. It looked a little bit flat at the moment. So I just painted a, a kind of a pathway or I lightened up that area. I do go back in and I try to um, develop the areas into little um, layers of maybe like bushes and undergrowth and things like that. And I think it really helps to find the distance within the image as if we're looking up from the lake at the bottom towards the house and we're seeing these plumes of smoke if they're clouds or if there's something on fire behind the hill, we don't know. And I really think this is a nice indicator of the kind of story that you would be reading if you picked up this Goosebumps book because it's kind of a horror element. I also decided I wanted a lot of pumpkins in the image, so what I did is painted them out on a separate piece of transparent sticker paper, and then I wanted to play around with the light coming through, so behind it, I wanted to play with um, having some orange light glowing from these pumpkins, and I think it sort of works um, when I come to do it, but you guys can be the judges of that. I want to do, yeah, like I said, indicate again the distance and the mountains in the background and how this is a hill and I really like this style of kind of circular shapes and I think that looks, it looks really nice in my opinion, I really like that and then just a kind of a, a plain, I mean it's really funny because the house is so detailed and sort of semi-realistic and then you have all this landscape around it which is completely quite cartoonish and I think, I don't know why, it just uh, the sim simpleness of it, it just works for me, I really like that. And uh, yeah, so just sticking down these sticker papers, just having fun with it for once. I think I've recently been putting a lot of pressure on myself to just do a really good job and although obviously I was trying here, I was trying more to have fun with it, so just like 
putting down the trees and cutting out shapes and layering it's just something that I haven't done in a while and I realize I really miss this kind of like textual element of building something with my hands we're not necessarily building but you, you know what I mean like creating something from paper and building it up as I go and I just it's something I want to do more of I miss doing the paper art stuff that I've done in the past and I think it's really fun and it's it helps out a bit as well because if you're painting something and then you put stick something down you can always tear it off and it gives you the chance to make mistakes and I think it makes you more relaxed as you're doing it. It's definitely the most experimental uh, piece I've ever made for a book cover so far because I've just you know I haven't used paper art in any of the other ones and I haven't really gone this far with using my fingers to smudge the paint or just going for like different textures and trying to see if they blend well so I think I sh should give myself a pat on the back for that aspect as I was saying before the color scheme is kind of the same as what I usually do so I need to remember that next time to step away from it a little bit I mean I do have some greens and oranges in there so maybe I'm being a bit too hard on myself but I think if you look at my work um, all together side by side you will see definitely I have a bit of a tendency to be uh, too much into these 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 colors have a bit of a bias towards them so I need to step away from that I really like the way the pumpkins looked it was so fun to stick them down and experiment with different faces when I was a kid I was never allowed to celebrate Halloween it was just like not really something that we did and so just fun to think about what kind of faces would go on these pumpkins and things like that and I just really like the way it looks and I think it's it's a fun book it's indicating you know because Goosebumps is fun at the end of the day it's not it's scary but it's kind of like kids scary where it has that horror element but everything's fine in the end and I think this really shows through this book cover which I really like and of course we had to have some sort of zombie hand appearing up at the bottom of the lake so I used some transparent sticker paper again for this and I created a little hand coming out of the water and then I stuck it down and I painted over the top with the jelly gouache again just to indicate uh, this thing coming out of the water and it's maybe it's going up to the house where the light is on and it's just trying to hint at a story within the picture. So I just cut off the edges and then took the sticker off, uh, the washi tape off and here we are, we're at the end. Okay everybody, that's it, that's the final look. I'm really pleased with the way this turned out and I thought it was so much fun to play around with using sticker paper and I, yeah, I really like this version of this cover and I hope that you guys like it too, let me know um, down in the comments. Don't forget that there's plenty of time to still enter the competition. I think a week today I will announce the winners, so get those entries in. The link is in the description of how to enter. And I'm just going to mention my patrons quickly because they are part of the YouTube tier. So they are Ace Tabellum, Lucille, Tim and Charlotte, Jacqueline, Alex, Steph, Eva, Erica and Megaya. Thanks so much to you guys for your support, it means the world to me. And that's it guys, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe and I will see you next time for more content and uh, happy reading and creating. Bye!